Hey everyone, Devin here with Backcountry Exposure. Yeah, we're talking about sleeping pads again today on the channel. I love talking about sleeping pads and comparing different sleeping pad models. And today we're talking about the Etherlite XT from Sea to Summit, comparing it against the Nemo Tensor Insulated. And you saw by the title of the video that I feel like the Etherlite XT is a more comfortable and better pad than the Nemo Tensor. Overall, let's be honest here for a second. Both of these pads are amazing. You cannot go wrong with either of them. But in my experience, even after so much time with the Nemo Tensor, the Etherlite is pretty freaking comfortable. But let's first talk about the Nemo Tensor. This has been a pad that I've been using, I don't know, for the last two and a half, pushing three years, I believe. And I've had this regular size for a long time. I've had the long wide in the Alpine version. I now have the mummy version. My daughter uses the uh, short version of the tensor. So I've had a lot of experience with the tensor. It's three inches thick and it uses their space frame baffle system. And it comes in at a pretty low weight for what it is. This one's at about 18 ounces for the regular uh, size. So that makes it 20 inches wide and 72 inches long. That's a standard size for a sleeping pad. But you're gonna increase or decrease weight by two to maybe four ounces, depending on which size of the pad you get. And that's the nice thing about all, both of these pad options is you can get really any size that you want. Long, wide, regular, wide, regular, mummy shaped, a short. So there's plenty of options and they're both within a very similar uh, price point. 150 to probably about 225, $230 is what you're gonna pay depending on which size of the pads you get. So now what else do I love about the Nemo Tensor? Well, at three and a half R value, you get something that is going to work really great down into freezing temperatures, high 20s, it's gonna keep you nice and comfortable as long as you've got a sleeping bag that's going to match those conditions, uh, temperatures that you're going to experience. And it's been flawless. Like you've got an awesome valve system that really only has one flaw for me and that has to do with the pump sack. The way that it attaches, it's really tight, which is nice because then it doesn't pop off super easy. But I many times pulled it too, uh, too quickly and it has pulled the underside uh, flap that is the deflation uh, valve piece and it pops out and then you've lost all of the air inside of uh, the pad by doing that. And that's less likely to happen with the way that the Sea to Summit is designed, but it's also not exempt from that as well. But you've got a 20 denier fabric on here and it's nice and quiet. When you compare this to other pads, like it doesn't make a bunch of noise, even though it has a metalized film on the inside of it to provide that insulation value, that 3.5 R value that you get out of it but it's not noisy. It doesn't give that chip bag sound that you get from like the X-Lite uh, from Thermarest, for example, which that's kind of like the gold standard of noisy pads and anything that is quieter than the X-Lite is gonna be <laughs> a better sleeping experience in my opinion. But it's funny when we talk about the noise that a pad makes, it's not only in the construction of the pad. A lot of it has to do with the floor of the tent or the shelter that you are using. Depending on that, either of these pads has the potential to uh, create more noise than is necessary depending on the coatings that are on the fabric that is used inside of the tent. And this 30 and 40 denier fabric that's on the Etherlite, this is a little bit more squeaky. Can you hear that? A little bit more squeaky than you get with like the uh, tensor here. So. I'm like trying to make a squeaky noise. Can you hear that? Can you hear it? It's a little bit like smoother and less rubbery with this 20 denier fabric than it is with this 30 and 40 denier fabric on the ether light. So that would be the one big downside with the ether light in that aspect. So plenty of comfort, plenty of support for back sleeping, slide sleeping with that three inches of 
uh, height that you get out of this. And when you're laying on it, you're not necessarily going to roll off super easy. It's pretty stable in terms of how it's gonna keep you from uh, rolling off the pad, the edge support. Uh, does a pretty good job. The space frame baffles don't necessarily prevent you from falling off, but it does provide more stability than say an X-Lite where you've got just straight horizontal baffles that uh, allow you to roll in that way. And it's comfortable, like I don't, I don't have limbs and stuff fall asleep when I'm sleeping on this pad, but how does it compare to the Etherlite? That's what we're here to talk about and to tell you that after I don't know, probably close to 100 nights total on any of the tensors and the short amount of time that I've had uh, using the Etherlite, this thing is way more comfortable. And part of that comes into the way that the baffles with this air sprung technology and the way that it's laminated, it's very reliable, that's been put together in just a way that creates an almost like a sleeping experience that you get in your bed at home. And that is awesome. It's super comfortable, four inches of height. You've got 3.2 R value with the ether light, tons of options in sizes and shapes out of it. And your weight is going to vary depending on that. Uh, it is gonna be a little bit bulkier and heavier than the Tensor. Uh, because it is a thicker pad, but it's also a thicker material. Like I said earlier in the video, a 30, 40 denier uh, hybrid versus a 20 denier on the Tensor. But the thing that I really like about this is the combination of comfort that you get with that four inches of height and the way that the baffles are put together. As opposed to more horizontal baffles that are uh, split up with those space frame uh, lamination points, you have just kind of a dimple effect here that's kind of that quilted pattern that you get out of a bed at home. And so very supportive and it just creates a lot of opportunities to move around the pad and stay on the pad, but also be very comfortable regardless of what kind of sleeper you are. Now it does have those downsides of it, of being more bulk and heavier because of the way that it's constructed. So the tensor, uh, it saves weight with the fabric, but also by using the metalized film, two layers of metalized film inside. The ether light is using an, well, it's using a synthetic uh, fill as well as a uh, metalized film. So you've got two different types of insulations on the inside of this particular pad. And I believe just, I don't know this scientifically or if, without reaching out to see to summit specifically, but with a four inch thick pad, you've got more airspace in there. And so that synthetic fill is going to help provide a little bit more warmth with a thicker pad. At least that is my understanding. That is my hypothesis in this conversation. But I have to say the combination of the height, the way that the baffles are put together on this, it's just, a way more supportive and comfortable sleeping experience than the Tensor. This thing, when it is like fully uh, inflated, it's kind of stiff and it, it's very supportive, but it's also kind of stiff. And in order for you to get the same kind of like plushy, awesome feel that you get out of the Etherlite, you have to deflate it a little bit, but then that reduces uh, a little bit of the insulation value because you don't have it inflated all the way and you have the higher potential of uh, pushing into the ground by being closer to the ground because of that. So I gotta say, it's amazing. The ether light is fantastic. And one of the things that I will say that I'm not a huge fan of from this pad, and that has to do with this pillow lock system that I think is just a huge gimmick from Sea to Summit. I mean, it, it works. It does the job if you have a Sea to Summit pillow. But I was on a recent trip using this pad and I was sitting on the pad at the edge or the doorway of my uh, Fly Creek tent and my socks were getting stuck to the Velcro and that was annoying. <laughs> like, I don't want my stuff getting stuck to this when uh, it's not supposed to be getting stuck to it. So little things that uh, do make a difference in your overall experience with a sleeping pad. So when it comes down to it, you gotta decide for yourself what is most important to you out of a sleeping pad. For me personally, I want the 
best sleep possible. I wanna sleep like I sleep at home, and so I take the luxury things that are gonna give me the best sleep that I can possibly get. And when I find a product that provides that, I run with it. And the Etherlite, when I'm looking at the shelf of gear, and I've got plenty of gear to choose from, you guys know that, when I'm looking at that shelf of gear, and I'm like, which pad am I gonna take with me? And it's a three season setting, I am finding myself choosing the Etherlite over the tensor because of the added thickness, basically the same R value, and not an immense amount of weight increase that would deter me from going with one or the other, regardless of it being the uh, regular version or the regular wide, obviously. Some of you might be thinking, well, you've got a regular wide version there, and you've got a regular 20 inch versus 25 inch, like, of course, the 25 inch wide pad is gonna be more comfortable than the 20 inch. Well, not the case. I have like 50 nights of sleep on the Alpine long wide tensor. So I slept on a 25 inch wide pad in the Nemo uh, tensor like design many, many times. And this is a more comfortable pad for me. I just have to say that. But that doesn't mean that the Tensor is not a good pad. It definitely has its pros. And we've covered that. Lighter fabric, lighter in general, it packs down smaller. It's just a great option. But the other thing that I wanna talk about has to do with the pump sacks. Both of the pump sacks that are included with these pads are great. In fact, I would say that the Nemo's uh, Vortex pump sack is probably the best pump sack on the market. It allows for really easy inflation, but it uh, it's loose from the uh, stuff sack, unlike the Etherlite. The uh, stuff sack and the pump sack are connected to each other, so that does add bulk in the length of the pad when it's totally rolled up and uh, put away, but both of them are great. They function super well. I don't have a problem with them like I do with the Big Agnes pump sacks or uh, the Exped pump sack. They're great pump sacks. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. If you have either of these pads and which one you prefer and why. Leave it down in the comments and let's have a discussion about it. Appreciate you guys watching today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Hope you have an awesome day. And as always, we'll see you next time.